This microscope shared on the web has a height adjustment which operates well. Surprisingly, however, it continues to do so even when the model is fabricated on a different laser cutter or on a machine that removes much more material. The secret that makes this possible are these elements, which we call curve cancelling mechanisms. This bearing operates reliably, the slider doesn't wiggle, and the gear that performs the height adjustment engages perfectly with its counterpart, all independent of the amount of removed material by the cutter. Let's look at how curve cancelling mechanisms work at the example of this bearing. The curve cancelling bearing consists of two design elements the jammer and the inverse scalar. Let's look at the jammer in isolation. The jammer is derived from a nautilus spiral. Into this nautilus cutout we place an inset of identical shape. An inset of the correct size would hold as is, but on a machine that removes additional material the inset comes out too small. However, the self-similarity of the Nautilus allows us to jam the inset in place by rotating the inset. So the shape of the jammer keeps the inset in place. In turn, the inverse scalar holds the axle in place, independent of the curve. This works because the shape of the inverse scalar is a flipped version of the jammer. More curve results in more rotation of the inset. The inverse nautilus shape narrows down the hole by exactly the same amount, resulting in bearings that reliably cancel out any curve, as shown here with increasing amounts of simulated curve. We applied this concept of jammer and inverse scalar also to sliders embedded into a plate, sliders orthogonal to the plate, and mechanisms such as this gearbox that require a well-tuned distance between the gears. Combined together, these mechanisms allow us to make laser cut machines that operate reliably, regardless of what laser cutter or milling machine was used to fabricate them.